Oh, hi. Um, one way to make very nice things more desirable is to have more versions, more colors, different materials and OLED start to sell with the Black Friday sales this year. The S2R in copper, a Baton Pro in titanium, they have the M2R Pro in the Desert 10, a Sika 2 Pro in orange, many more deals and free gifts and there is the S1R Baton 2 in red and gold. So to find out about this flashlight stay tuned. Hello my dear friends and welcome to a new video from Mad Max Deals and Reviews. Today I want to speak about the red S1R Baton 2 from Olight. Olight sent me this sample, thank you for that, uh, so I can run my tests and of course make some pictures and promotions for you and uh, Olight did not pay me for my work. They did not tell me what I'm allowed to say, what I'm allowed to do in my tests and they did not influence me what I have to leave out, like others. So, that's it. Uh, the S1R Baton 2 is not a very new flashlight. There have been another version in this blue and desert 10, which is very nice also. So, I think I can go over all the points uh, just quickly. And if you have any questions, any comments, please leave your comment or contact me via uh, email martin at madmax.com so I can make follow-ups or I can help you with your decisions. Uh, at first a quick look on the packaging so that when you buy it what would you receive. There is this nice box uh, with the specs on the back side of course. There is the all that typical this this nice drawer so they have their system so you if you have one OLED you know the others that's I, I like that there is an um, insulation which you have to put pull out at first there is the user manual of course the flash that would sit in this protection plastic when you receive it they add a red lanyard because it's the red edition and nice thing to do they have this red uh, charging cable which I want to speak in a minute they add a protection box for your uh, battery or batteries if you need a second so that will be also a point and they add this nice brown bag where you can store and protect your flashlight so putting that off the side the charging cable that's one thing in the OLED family is they have their system. They use this magnetic charging and the USB plug so you can plug it on a power bank your, in your car or on your PC or a wall, wall plug whatever. So that is very universal. It's a universal serial bus. So we know that. And they have made it in red because it fits the red color and it really matches. So that's nice. Um, I was a little bit confused because it's red inside. I have seen on the M2R Pro, the new charging cable which can go up to 2 amps. Now this one is 1 amp and it does charge with 1 amp uh, uh, on the side. Uh, I was hoping the red indicates, um, in the contrary to the black of my other cables, uh, that is more power. But here is more maybe for the design. So yeah, you have to read. That's it. But you can use that cable of course on any other uh, actual OLED flashlight so that's they stick in their system and that's maybe a downside for some because if you do not have your OLED charging cable you have to buy a new one because the OLED flashlights uh, use OLED batteries with the plus and the minus on one side. So without using some tricks and magnets and uh, fiddling around a little bit, you are not able to charge that in a regular charger. So maybe a downside too, but they stay in their system. And what I like about the S1R um, 
is that you can use, in the contrary of, to other flashlights, you can use third-party uh, third um, batteries. This is from Shockley. So that that worked too. So that's nice. And what's even more cool? Whoops! You can use where is it? A primary cell, a CR123A. So single use, not rechargeable. Uh, be careful to have the plus to the back side, and the whole the whole thing screws screws from the flash from the head. And you hear that? It scratches a little bit on. On the belt clip, I hope it does not scratch and wear off. So that's I, I try to to give attention here and then, but then you hold it very in a strange way. But you can open without scratching. So yeah, maybe a plus minus point. Now there are three volt batteries in there, and it does run. It does not run like on turbo because. You see it dims down immediately because the voltage is too low. The uh, lithium ion battery is up to 4.2 volts. The primaries are uh, around 3 volts. So they cannot deliver the full full power. But you can use it for emergency. You can have one of these in the cars. They have a battery life, a storage life, I think 10 years, something like that. They can withstand really cold temperatures. So have your emergencies and that's an emergency light. If the battery dies, you find your way. That's bright enough for many, many, many tasks. So that said, a pro on the S1R Baton 2 is you can use aftermarket batteries. You cannot charge them in the flashlight, but they are cheap to get as and have a an backup because the capacity of this small 14350 batteries, they are quite small, it's around 500 milliamp hours. So if you go on a longer, longer journey, you need to have the charging to charge on the way and when that's not possible, get your replacement batteries. So that is a plus. Um, about the user interface, very short, like we know on OLED, and I take up my Black thing here, click is on, click is off, click and hold starts in, you cannot see, half a lumen, very very dim, so there is a real moonlight mode, so you do not blind, I like that, click and hold goes to the modes in an acceptable speed, there is low, medium and high, low, medium and high, and if you double click you have the turbo, if you click you see it dims off, I, I like that, that's, that's that's very nice, dimming on and dimming off on the higher levels makes it more smooth and uh, look nice. Um, double click is the turbo, triple click is the strobe. If you want to um, lock it out, click and hold, so I do this, you can see it comes on and it goes off again. When you now try to click it, there is the red LED indicating that's electronically blocked. Click and hold until it comes on again, and then it works. Another nice thing from the S1R, you can make a mechanical lockout by unscrewing the tail cap just a little bit and breaking the contact. Big plus. And what else? Yeah, the red LED does not only indicate when it's locked. There is a green, orange and red, so you can see the battery status when it's switched on, you see it comes on in green, that's above a certain level, maybe 60%, I have to put in the numbers here. So battery indicator is here also included. Um, maybe some people told me the thinking that was nice. Oops, that's, it's bent a little bit, so that makes it not very nice. You see the TIR optic here, <laughs> it's nearly 180 degrees where the light is emitted. You see in my hands, they're getting illuminated here, so it's really, really nice how the beam profile is. It's very wide, so you have a lot, have some light to spill in front of your feet, but there is a hotspot maintained by this TIR optic, the total internal reflection. Um, compared to, do I have a, yeah, that's a reflector flashlight, the S, S10R reflector has the spot in the middle, there is the angle from 
from this spill and it's by far not as even as a TI is capable of. That's a reflector in the comparable size and here you see how even the beam distribution, the light distribution is and there is a spot which is very useful for looking and give quite some range. Of course I forgot a feature of the user interface. It has a built-in switch off timer so you can set a 3 minute or a 9 minute timer and then the flashlight goes off by itself. So when it's on you click and hold the second click, click hold. There was two clicks indicating the 9 minute, the long and click hold. One flash indicating it will switch off itself in 3 minutes. So nice feature too. About the numbers, I uh, take you to my bench and show how I take my numbers. Let's take the lumen numbers. At first I write down the numbers from the box. Then the next is, this is my lumen tube, you should know it. Um, switching on. I choose a um, reflecting plate and entry filter to say to keep as most as possible light in there. So first step is I take one of my Mauka lights. This one is expected to have 250 lumens on switch on. So let's switch on. It's 250 and then it goes down to 249. Now it's 248. So it's one lumen off. So uh, I think that's good enough. So start with the S1R, the small red one. This one should be 0 0.5 lumens. I cannot measure 0 0.5. I think the lowest one is about 2 or 3 lumens. So I get 0 plus because it's on. Next step, grab and hold is giving 11 lumens instead of 12. That's good. So then it should be 60. I measure 85. Then it should be 600. I get 660 and I'm doing this fast to reducing the heat. Double click. 1000 is expected and it goes to 1070 something. 1070 plus. So that's on switch on. If you have it fresh from the charger, maybe you read 1080, 1085. That's that's just for yeah. So we have seen 1070 something. So now we can go and go get a clock. So I usually just use my phone, go to the stopwatch mode and then look that everything is is here and then I double click start the time 1081 that's my first reading then after five seconds 1060 10 seconds 1050 15 is 1039 1032, 1025, 30 seconds, 1018. So it's above the expectation for ANSI, 1012. And then I go to the, until it does the step down, 1006. They say one and a half minute, 45, it's 1000 exactly. 50 seconds 996, 55991, 60 seconds is 986, now well, that's 916. You see it drops now due to the heat, 824, so it falls 7, 710. 604 how to speak and to look 470 so that's just to see 350 to get the ballpark numbers 301 
So here we are, 301. They expect told us 302. 302. 55 is 303. So now it now it cools down 303 after 2 minutes and it's hot. Let's try this just to be something I see 40 degrees not caring about so it's 42 42 degrees can stop this so it gets hot yes but not too hot 42 is nice uh, we they tell us after one and a half second it goes down to 300 uh, one and a half minutes sorry so that's one 10 20, 30 we have 350 still in the mark and exactly 301 after one and a half minute which is here so that's great that's exactly what they tell us so i would like a lot of other manufacturers would stick to their numbers as ola does so big thumbs up for that and you've seen i have to done it Usually I repeat this and now I will charge it and repeat a second time and a third time just to see if my numbers are ballpark plus minus 5% or 10, whatever. So well done, all right. So let's have a quick look in my garden. That's the Lumintop FW3A triple XPLHI neutral white tint in this level. It's 995 lumens in my box. So you can see my garden and how nice this neutral white is. Let's start with the tree up there. That's 30 meters, uh, 25 meters, sorry. 30 meters down there, the yellow door where my garage sits. This wooden box starts at the, at the front at 15 meters. And this small wooden box is three meters from the camera. And there is some where the kids play. So, nearly 1000 lumens and now starting in the moon mode with the Olight. I'm not sure, I can see the 3 meters to the box in front of me, down there. My camera is set to 20 frames, manual mode, manual exposure, 1600 ISO. So with the adapted eyes I could use this one lumen mode. But maybe you need this one, I think it's rated for 12, am I right? So easily to see 10 meters I see the wooden box at 15 uh, yeah I can see the door at 30 meters but you can can use this level 10 to 20 lumens easily to walk and to see where you are next brightness level medium wasn't 60 something I think easily to, easily to see the whole garden that's high, 600 lumens. No problem for my garden or for the tree. Now going to the 1000, it's not a big step to the eye, but you see how nice the beam of this TIR optic is. And the beam quality, uh, the beam color is a little bit cold. So let's switch that off. Come on. That's the neutral white tint from the XPL HIs. So you see that this tree is much yellower here. It's hard to see my camera screen, but to the eyes a big difference. And of course, this, the triple optic has a very floody beam. Switch that off. All light direct to turbo. So you see beam quality is very nice. There is a spot, of course, which is nice and, and round and you have enough spill up front to see where you go so really nice from such a small flashlight so then let's go back inside so let's make a conclusion do I like the S1R pattern too? yes I do especially I think the, this one is cool too this desert tan this um, blue and also the red and the gold so 
the anodization quality of the OLED flashlights is, is really top notch. There is no problems, no things. They come well secured. Everything fits together. So um, you do not like this color. Maybe you like another one or you like the blacks. That's up to you. Um, I like the S design on the belt clips they use so you can have it upside down. Uh, upside down that's that way or you can have the optics up you can easily clamp it to your head to your cap to use it like a headlamp headlamp so you have both hands free for working uh, the TIR optics that's a nice way to distribute the light uh, as the manufacturers using the optics and yeah I think that's a good flashlight to have or maybe to gift because that's ho 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 it's a kind of a christmas gift it's nice collectible too and uh when you go around the downside if it's one uh with the charging and being one system which is separate from the other charging systems um then i'm quite sure you will be happy owning this flashlight so Thanks for watching. Maybe I earned your subscription. You know the deal. Thanks for clicking down there and hope to see you next time. Bye bye.